Do the Our Father and Padre Nuestro. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Padre Nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad así en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos del mal. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. All right. I was going to start this with a line from a... Uh, West Side Story. I had to change it because a friend of mine was like, "Where's that line from? From, from West Side Story, the song that she sings? Puerto Rico, my heart's devotion. Let it sink back in the ocean." <laughs> because they had that battle going. She wanted to stay in Manhattan, and he wanted to go back to Puerto Rico, and they had the whole, the whole battle going. It's one of my favorite songs too. <laughs> So I just changed it to the name. The nickname of Puerto Rico is La Isla del Encanto, the Enchanted Island. Oh, before I forget, this weekend, though this week coming up, coming up with the next week, Elizabeth and Gloria are having their birthdays. So there's tres leches cake back there in their honor. Thank you. You're welcome to share with us. What? I oh, know Elizabeth and Gloria said them. Yeah. My mom controls the right there. Yeah. So that's, that's just the name. So you know the name of it. All right, so there's Puerto Rico. It is a teeny tiny little island. It, my dad used to say that Puerto Rico can fit in Cuba about eight times, and Cuba can fit into Florida like four or five times. So I just get, so you get an idea of how tiny that island is. And yes, you can go, you can drive around the island in one day. My dad did that. One summer day, he was like, what are you doing today? I'm like, nothing. I have some business to do. You want to come with me? Sure. We went driving around the island. It was great. Puerto Rico is a Caribbean island. It is called Estado Libre Asociado, Associated Free State. It is. It has all the benefits of being a state, but they don't pay taxes. So it is part of the United States in that, in that sense. They came up. This was a deal with back and forth, back and forth. How did, they, they didn't want to be independent, but they didn't want to be a state. So they, so they came up with the Estado Libre Asociado. There's roughly 3.2 million residents. They've been American citizens since 1917. Spanish, English, and dollars will be found everywhere. And the re last referendum from 2020, 52% went statehood. So. Eventually, maybe we don't know, but there's still people that don't want to do it. They want to be independent. I don't know how they're going to do that. Um, the seal, the crest of the island, it says, "This is uh, John is his name." This is from the Bible, when the mom says, "John," oh no, the boy they were for John the Baptist, because San Juan is named after San Juan Bautista. St. John the Baptist. And there's all kinds of little things here from the island. You got San Juan in the north, that's the capital. Ponce is in the south, but we've lived in both of those places. So I'm going to take you to Ponce because we're going to start south. Like I said, whirlwind tour, folks. It is the most populated city outside of San Juan metropolitan area. It was founded in 1692. It's named for Juan Ponce de Leon. You all know who Ponce de Leon is, right? Cool. The nickname is La Perla del Sur, the Southern Pearl, or La Ciudad Señorial. The um, oh, what is the Señorial? Uh, hmm? Floridly, yeah. It is a very quaint city. It is still kind of see the the old multiple colors of it. Very, they they kept some of that older. <laughs> Look to the, and this isn't within the town itself. 
you see pictures? Places to go there. There's a Museo de Arte de Ponce. It's an art museum in Ponce. We used to go there probably about a once a month or twice a month. It was really fun to go. Well, I taught every couple of months or so. Um, they have some really nice, uh, definitely, definitely a museum, but they have beautiful stuff. This right here, what, what the heck is this called? The Frightening or something that it's relatively well known painting. What am I talking about? Let's just move on. See, there you go. We have all these wonderful things. And it's a really fun place to go, and it's very welcoming. They have families going there. It's like an old, old museum. The other place that I love, this is one of my favorites, because around, I want to say around here, is a movie theater. And we went to go see a Cantinflas movie one year. It's an old movie theater. It was really fun. Uh, there's Plaza Las Delicias with, with the first Catholic chapel in Ponce, which was established in 1670. Plaza Las Delicias, Delicias is a delicious thing, delights. Has two sections. One of them has La Puente de los Leones. See the lions? The lions fountain. And the other side has Plaza Luis Muñoz Rivera. Luis Muñoz Rivera was a Puerto Rican author, poet, and politician. Those were the days when there were actually intellectuals and they ran for politics. Go figure. Parks are prominent in almost every Hispanic town, every Hispanic culture. They're the central section of the town, they're the hub. Families go there on the weekends. People walk around there. You read some of the old stories that you know that's where you met your honey. Because you'd go walking around the park with your friends and oh hey baby. You know, <laughs> they wouldn't say that, but you know what I mean. Uh, and the parents are right there, so the parents can check you out right away. You know, get that out of the get all that uncomfortable <laughs> stuff out of the way. But this is it, those are the places to go. We used to go there, and we used to go to Mass here at the Catedral de la Virgen de Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe makes her appearance everywhere. She does here too. And after Mass, we used to go to just hang around the park, or we would go to eat ice cream, or we would go you know, spend some time at the park. That's something that, I don't know if it's very American, but in, in, in some places it is, and some places it's not. The central park, the, these plazas are huge in in the, in the Hispanic world. They also have one of the coolest places to me when I was growing up. Yes, I'm going to be in, putting a lot of information that I like. Parque de Bombas. Bombas means bombs, but it also means pumps. And this was done for the firemen that saved the city one year. And it, it, it's, a, it's a museum. You can go there and hang and, and go take a look at some of the old cars and stuff that they have. What I love about it is just the colors. When you're seven, eight years old and you see that, you're like, yeah, baby, this is my place. <laughs> and that's kind of like, and that to me, it, it still brings that both memories back. I said, really enjoyed that. They also have a place called Castillo Serrayes. It's a castle. By the Serrayes family. The Serrayes family, in case you were wondering, are very well known for a rum. Not Bacardi, but Don Cu. Don Cu is named after. Anybody know? Don Quixote, yes, ma'am. And the place is. I mean, the family doesn't live there, but the castle is there and people can rent it out. Dinners there, wedding receptions. I have a wedding reception with really old-fashioned stuff. I mean, this is really cool. To me, it's cool. <coughs> a lot of brides will probably go, no, I don't think so. But just like any good Spanish home, you have the patio on the inside, in the center. 
see in one of the, one of the old Corinthians, because this is the family. This is a young, cool family. They have the University of Pontificia Universidad Católica de Puerto Rico. It is one of the most important universities in Puerto Rico. And when I saw these arches, so it's a little arch, it reminded me of something else. When we were growing up, this was my church. Iglesia de Santa Maria Reina. My school was nearby, and this was our, our church when whenever we had mass for the whole school. And in those days, we used to dress up, and we had the everyday uniform, khaki pants, white shirt, and the mass uniform, white pants, long pants, and white shirt. You didn't really look good. I don't know if they go there anymore. But this is this is our church. They have a mosaic in the back with the of the Virgin Mary. They have saints and stuff around. And there's no air conditioning, folks. You just open up the windows. The sea breezes go through the whole island. It's that tiny. Now we're gonna go from Ponce, we're gonna go to 52 and go around this way, and we're gonna go to La Parguera. La Parguera, there are only five bioluminescent bays in the world, and three of them are in Puerto Rico. You know what bioluminescent bay? Okay. <coughs> um, you go there, and it looks just like a regular beach. At night, you can jump in the water, and what happens is all the, there's all these little microscopic creatures that when you agitate the water, they get angry and they light up the, and they light up. So it looks like the water glows. When I was little, we went there and we, we got on the boat and we're going along and I, and I realized that the water is glowing next to me. And you, I, I mean, I even took some home with me and it worked for like a couple of days. Then you know, they stopped. They died. <laughs> but they, but it is, it, it glows. La Bahia Fosforescente. It's really cool, and you and you can't find pictures of it because it's really hard to take pictures. So most of these pictures were fake. In other words, they 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 took a they used another light in there or whatever. But it's really hard to do. But it really they they glow. It's the coolest thing ever. Let's see if this shows you anything else. Come on. All right. We were down here. And there's Ponce. In the center, there's all these mountains. Uh, you no longer have to go through the mountains. You can go get on these highways to go there. But when I was growing up, you had to go through the mountains. And if you've ever been to the old mountains, the old, when you cross the mountains in Colorado, the old roads, you do the, yeah. Well, you don't do that anymore. So we're going to go to San Juan. San Juan is a conglomeration of, you know, like, Nine different towns. You have Carolina, Trujillo, Rio Piedras, uh, Guaynabo, Bayamón, Guadalta, Cataño. Where's San Jose? It's in there somewhere. It's another one, San Jose. We lived in Rio Piedras, we lived in Carolina, we lived in San Jose. Uh, but it's San Juan itself doesn't have a, that huge population. You add all the other metropolitan things, you're looking at most of the population of Puerto Rico is there. Um, and if you ever there and you hear, but then talk about it, tapón de Bayamón, tapón is a cork that you put on something. El tapón de Bayamón is describing the traffic jam. The traffic there is so bad that you're stuck in one place for an hour or so. You don't move. <laughs> it's really crazy. All right, so. The capital is the most popular populous municipality, the island's financial, cultural, and tourism center. It has a population of 335,000 as of 2019. However, you add Bayamón, Guaynabo, Cataño, Canúbanas, Caguas, Coalta, Coaja, Carolina, and Trujillo Alto, and about 2.6 million inhabitants. So about 80% of the population. So San Juan, it could rival. New York in some ways. And then you have a nice little skyline of 
the touristy area of San Juan. This is more towards the Laguna. <coughs> so what th what's to, what to do there? What to do? Well, the first thing that they just added is casinos. They might have done about 10 years ago or so. You can go play in the casinos just like anywhere else. But the casinos are so popular, I'm going to move on to something else. They have Museo de las Americas. It's a museum that covers the history of Puerto Rico, the history of the Americas. So you, but they have it like recreated little spots, things that they have dug out, ships. You have little houses in the back that are the traditional houses with the tin roof. Which I love. You can find history of it. Which I love the old map. It just looks like some modern modern things. I don't know. And they have the traditional Puerto Rican. Things will offer to you this is a chapel. You got some of the costumes that people wear for different celebrations. So we're gonna go this way. We're gonna hit Condado, La Cola, La Cola del Condado. We're gonna move move towards Old San Juan. Old San Juan is still looks like old Spain. So we're gonna go first. Come on. La Laguna del Condado. Well, you're going to find most of the hotels around there. It's not really a lagoon because it's salt water, but it's an area enclosed. So you can call it La Laguna. Um, the hotels are in a great spot because if you can't get to the beach, well, you can just put it right next to the lagoon. You still got salt water, you still got a little beach there. So it works out really well for them. See this? This is what I mean. It, it just it comes. It's water. It's salt water, but it comes in. It makes up a little lagoon. One of the places there is a Fuerte de San Jerónimo. It's the tiniest little place. You're done in two minutes. Walk in, look around. That's nice. You know. Um. There's beaches nearby. If you notice all these little, all, these, all these rocks, they break the, the surf, so you have a nice calm water when you go swimming there. But that's this is the smallest one of, of three forts that you're gonna find in San Juan. This I found this picture. This is from 1911. I have no idea why they have that up there. But my guess is they were still using it for business, for something. The Spaniards put these castles in different places to protect the city from pirates and protect the city from people coming in. But by 1911, they didn't really didn't need it. It's the Puerto de San Jerónimo. There it is. It, it, like I said, it is the tiniest one of all of them. There's really nothing there. But you gotta go and just look, take a look at it. You know, once, sometime, go take a look at it. Right next to it, or nearby, so it's the area called El Escambron, which is where you have the beach, <laughs> the nice beach. I love El Escambron. Uh, it, they, it's, they have natural and manual reefs around there to help it, to help it keep all the big surf out. So you can be able to be able to come and you, you have that there. Over here, you have a, an Olympic type training area. With track, they also have swimming pool, which I was still was kind of silly, but then you know, you have swim, I still go swim in a, in a pool. You have the marine park on playa, another beach down there. It's become a quite a quite a place to go. And you have all the tour, all the hotels, all the big hotels there. On the way to Old San Juan, you hit the capital. It looks like our capital, the capital here. The, it looks kind of like the <coughs> Oklahoma, plus the one in the, in the, in the, the United States Capitol, or, or the, the one over there. Oh, Texas. But it's, it's a little bit different. You can go visit. Same kind of, you know, games of everywhere. You find it everywhere. All right, so we got a condado over here. Carigas is over here in the San So we're going to move this way towards Old San Juan. And there's the capital. 
So we're going to hit the first big castle, Castillo San Cristobal. It is an older castle. The walls go all the way around there. This castle and the next one, they have the walls go around old San Juan. They're huge, like this thick, to protect you from cannonballs. You know, those pesky things go flying around here. Um, it is used by the government also. And you have the Garita del Diablo. This is a Garita. Okay, it's a, for the guards to go and watch and make sure that nothing bad happens and it will warn you. This one's called La Garita del Diablo because it seems that almost every time they put somebody there, they disappeared. So they started saying the devil took them. Personally, I think they just decided, you know what, nobody's going to look at look, look for me, so I'm just going to take off and go into the, tent, into the town. They'll eventually find me. But you got La Garita del Diablo. It's, it's, a, it's an old, it's you know, quick, it's an old tale. But it's right there by the ocean, which is the other thing. That's the other thing. If you get bit really bad surf, you have no choice but to suck out of there. Interesting. Then you have Viejo San Juan. It was founded in 1521. The traditional old Spanish town with the little cobblestone streets. Down the corner, go to... The Casa Museo Felicia Rincón de Gautier. She was the first woman mayor of San Juan. That lady back there, got to meet her. And then she's got a couple of pictures with her. With Doña Felicia. Doña Felicia also, one year, I think she's the one that did it. Um, Puerto Rican kids have never seen snow. Hello, tropics. Um, she had it flown in. She had snow flown in so that the kids could play in the snow until it melted. And they did. Oh, well, I should have been. I wasn't there. I mean, I heard about it. Don't do it. But it's her house, and it's been changed into a museum. Down La Calle del Cristo, there's a cap at the other, at the other street, there's a Capilla del Cristo, which is, was built in 1753. It's a little chapel. This is all silver. It's a beautiful little chapel. I think I'm sure there's a story behind it. I researched, I looked, couldn't find any of it. But it was a, it's a little chapel in Old San Juan. The street is closed to traffic, so it works out really well. You can just walk, go walk in there. They have little restaurants and stuff that you can go to. Uh, it's open most of the time, most of the day. <coughs> Of course, they have to close it up at night. I mean, you could, you're not going to leave all this silver just hanging around. They also have a parque, parque de las palomas. Palomas are pigeons. So you get to feed the pigeons. Relax. Feed the pigeons. There are very few there. I've seen all the pictures where it, it looks like Attack of the Birds, man. It's a floor, wall to wall pigeons. If you don't like them, I understand. Um, something else you can find in Old San Juan is dominoes. Between Puerto Ricans and Cubans and a lot of Hispanics, we love our dominoes. And yes, it looks like checkerboard because the the concrete is, is built with the checkerboard built in. So you can play checkers. Right? But you have dominoes. They come in dominoes. And you'll find them everywhere. Their friends sit there and they, you know, they spend hours playing dominoes. Some of them bent on it. My grandfather was really good at it. So was, so was my uncle. I mean, they were both very, very good at this stuff. I learned a little bit, but I was never that interested in it. Now I'm older and I'm really I'm interested in it. So, you know. But you can, you can find it. I love this the umbrella. You don't, you know, that's something that I don't, I, I don't see very much here. But you people using umbrellas because of the sun, not because of rain. But they use it because of the sun. And they're on the chain. See, there's more over here playing dominoes. She's there telling him what to do. 
No, that one. This one. Okay, move on. Piraguas. Elizabeth brought some of this stuff up, but she had a picture of it. But there, what, did, what did you call them? Las Palas. When she said Las Palas, it reminded me of it. Inside the little booth or little cart that moves around is a big, huge block of ice. And they have a little metal scraper that they just, they just scrape the ice and they put the, the ice in the cup and scrape some more and they put the ice in the cup and then they put flavors on it. So it's like snow cones where we all have all the different things. They're so good. Especially when it's, you know, 85 degrees. On the Puerto Rico, that's pretty much average. Um, it is it is kind of warm all year round, but between 80, 85 all year round. But you got you know, permanent breeze going, which you know you don't realize how much it is. And it was because in the tropics you get to have all this fruit and all these flowers and all this stuff growing everywhere. Anyway, I digress. So let's move on. I'm going to skip the videos. When we come back and watch them, there's only one that I know for sure I wouldn't watch. Them. Now, we're going to go to the biggest one, biggest port. It's the Castillo San Felipe del Morro. Morro is a Spanish word for mouth. Okay? It's, an, it's kind of a slangish morro. This is at the mouth of the bay. That's why it's called San Felipe del Morro. It is the biggest castle, it's the biggest fort. You have, it's at the edges of the bay. It started construction in 1539 and finished in 1790. It became a six story, six level construction that protects the entrance. In 1898, it became part of the U.S. military until it was, it was retired in 1961. And yeah, the military were there, and you can still see some of their stuff still there, the military stuff. But you can see old cannons, you can see cannonballs, and or you can go fly a kite. They are called papalotes, or we call them chiringas. Families love to spend time there. See, this is this is old San Juan. All this is the, the, the big old green area. That's the that's El Morro. It's a huge area. And the wall goes all the way around the city. Over here, you have a cemetery. An old cemetery. Old historic cemetery. The old tomb. Have you ever been to have you ever been to New Orleans? Anybody? The old cemetery there? This is kind of the same thing. Except it's not on, on water, so they don't come bob it up. And this section is called La Perla, the Pearl. It is the oldest section in San Juan. It's also one of the poorest. And every time it gets destroyed by a hurricane, people go back and rebuild there. Because they don't want to leave that area. They like it there. So that you can't move them. Could you help them? Okay, you want to rebuild? Here's the stuff. Rebuild them. What are you going to do? See, there's the cemetery. And that's what I mean. It's an old. It is, it's gorgeous. See, here's the castle at night. It looks really pretty at night. But you're going to walk it around there. When, when, when we were kids, we would run around all over the castle. And we'd go, we would go find the cannons and act like we were shooting. <laughs> yeah. One of the exceptions of the area was Paseo de la Princesa. La Princesa, this is what comes up. This is La Princesa. It's an old prison named after Queen Isabel. So, Paseo de la Princesa is the walk of the princess. But this is the princess, the old prison. Um, it's been beautified for tourists, of course. So it's a beautiful area to walk. When you go towards the, at the end, there's a fountain there talking about their, their native field, you know, the, the, the homeland. 
a beautiful fountain at the end. You also have this, which it has to do with, with the religious power and the religious beliefs in the, in, the, in the church. You have the the bishop, the, the archbishop, and you have the people coming in. In El San Juan, you'll find the cathedral. I told you this was going to be whirlwind. I hope all of this is making sense to you guys. But I was like, I need to show these people this one. La Catedral de San Juan Bautista, St. John the Baptist. It was constructed from wood in 1521. A hurricane destroyed it. So they built the current structure in 1540. It was shaped later. The last time was in 1917. It is the first cathedral church in the Americas. It's gorgeous. It really is. I love the design of it. I love the religious things in there. Again, no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can live with air conditioning. You also find the tomb of Ponce, Juan Ponce de Leon. Although the fight is, it, he could be here, he could be in the Dominican Republic, he could be nowhere, we don't know. But just in case, I went ahead and put the whole information up. This is who he was Juan Ponce de Leon. There's also the Colo de Niños de San Juan. This is a personal note. I was a member of this club. It was, so was my sister. For those of you that know her. Uh, the artistic director was Eddie Lucio Cordova. It's for children between 5 and 18. You have to audition to become a member and you have to look, look for rhythm, tone, memory, vocal ability. Uh, I don't know if you're going to look for all that with me, or it was just, oh, we have another boy, bring it in. Because there's a lot of girls, but there's not enough boys. On a side note, one of the cool things about this is that they, they got in touch with her when they were doing the, the, the opera La Boheme in San Juan. And they said, we need a children's car because we're gonna, there's a section in the opera where Parvignol, who was the toy maker, comes out, and the kids want to go running to him. So... She asked for volunteers, my buddy Carlos, and I'm like, yes, we'll do it! It was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> I was 11, 12. Okay, moving on. There's the Universidad de Puerto Rico, Recinto de Rio Piedras. Rio Piedras, remember, is one of the many thousands of habitats in San Juan. I never went to this university. Uh, we spent a lot of time there. They have a, an awesome science museum where cool 11 year old me got to see a mummy. An actual mummy. You know, when you were 11, that is like the coolest thing in the world, man. You do forget Santa. We got a dead person here. <laughs> uh, the students rank within the top. 10 to 15 percent of high school graduates. If you're qual if you qualify, you can go in for free. The university pretty much pays for a lot of this stuff. Uh, most of, most of the students don't really have to pay anything. They, they pay into that. Rio Piedras is the oldest and largest campus of the University of Puerto Rico system, having been established in 1903. Now we're going to go to from San Juan. Over here to the Arecibo Observatory. Anybody want to know this? Yeah, it kind of, if, if you watch you know, GoldenEye, it's in there. James Bond has a fight in, in there. And Jodie Foster is in it also. They used it to get signals from outer space. It's an observatory in Barrio Esperanza in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, owned by the U.S. National Science Foundation. It was the world's largest single aperture telescope for 53 years, surpassed in July 2016 by the 500 meter aperture spherical telescope, FAST, from China. Oh, well. Sadly, this is a whole other bit, but what happened was a couple of the cables snapped and they were going to fix them, then they thought, okay, we'll just retire it, we'll, fix, we'll get it fixed anyway. Did, but the whole structure collapsed, which is very sad because this was this was a cool place to go for science. 
The dish is still there. Oh, there's Congress, too. So we're going to go from there to Luquillo. This is Luquillo. It is an awesome beach in Puerto Rico. See, lots of palm trees, lots of stuff to do. But the coolest thing to do is to go to those kioscos. They have these kiosks right outside the beach. They used to be little shacks. When I was growing up, there were just little shacks. And they didn't care that there were little shacks. They had bacalaitos. Bacalaitos are cod fritters. They're, 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 it's flour and some, what other they, 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 they batter. Like a batter, and they put cod in them. This is the cod, and they fry it. And so they're, they're, a lot, they're pretty big and really, really thin. Oh, they're so good. They are so good. Now it's like this well-designed avenue. Lots of cars, lots of stuff, but they still have all the people making bacalaitos. That's more that little bit to do. Now we're going to go to El Yunque. It's a national forest. It's a rainforest. It is the only tropical rainforest in the U.S. National Forest Service. I told you they were Puerto Rico part of the United States. Uh, it has nearly 29,000 acres, one of the smallest in size, yet more, the most biologically diverse. El Yunque most likely comes from, from or relates to the Spanish word Yunque, meaning anvil, because part of the mountains, when you look at it from a certain angle, it looks like an anvil. But also, it's been said that it be, it comes from the, it's been, you know, the, the Spanish have heard this, Yuque or Yuque, which possibly means white land, which was the native name for the for that area. Luquillo or Yuquillo was another name for for it. They had all kinds of little hidden places that are now public places, which really makes me mad. But my uncle took took us to this. I have a picture, by the way, of, of me next to this when I was little. Uh, um, it is cool to go there. It is. It doesn't stop raining. It's a rainforest. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky to go with somebody that knows the ins and out, they'll take you. My uncle did this. He took us deeper into the forest, and there was a natural water slide. I mean, like rock with moss mm -hmm. on it. And you got to the top, and you sit there, and you slide down, and you hit the and you hit the, the pond at the bottom. Good is God. Was like so fun. It was so cool. <laughs> it was fun. The only thing is that nowadays it seems like everybody has found these little places. But you know, it's okay. They're fun to go to. They're a really cool place to go. And they have parrots. Parrots. Puerto Rican parrots. Do you know the Puerto Rican parrots? Puerto Rico has little parrots and lizards. And I just found out today, looking at it, they had a boa. Gonna get to the little flower. Oh. <laughs> these people like to stick, they want to take them out of out of, out of the island. They've, they've been fighting a lot of people trying to steal them out. But they go, they're they're everywhere in the Yunque. Now now we're gonna talk about El Coqui. This is what Elizabeth would say. El Coqui is the most common frog in Puerto Rico. It has 16 different species. It is found within the territory, including 13 in El Yunque. El Coqui for Frog gets his name from the mating call of the male. Uh, it sounds like it's he's saying coqui, coqui. Male coquis use are called to attract female frogs. I don't know why. You know, females they like you can scream or something. And they savage the territory. Male coquis start singing around the time the sun sets and continue throughout the night until dawn. Here's a penny. They're teeny, teeny, tiny. <laughs> we'll play a video and you'll hear how loud they are. Some of you grew up in the country. Yeah. And you listen to crickets at night. And if you ever get, if you sometimes, have you ever tried to, I mean, you feel like I can't go sleep and find a recording of crickets at night and play that and you feel like, 
if that's what it does this does for me. If I find a recording of a cookie, it helps me go to bed right away. Because they're everywhere. They're in the city, they're in the country, they're they're everywhere. And they're Hello oh, baby. And to me, this is, see, to me, this is, oh, it's nighttime. I know it's nighttime. So loud. They are very loud. Even in, in, in Santurce, my grandfather had a house right next to a major avenue. And you could hear the traffic. But you could hear the cookie at night. So... That was your whirlwind tour of Puerto Rico. Thank you, Sorry that.